people this. We need to figure out what to do with this. Couch. Couch. We have been debating the couch area for a really long time. Yeah, we? we have. Yeah, we yeah. have. This, we considered this over the wheel well sliding into each other to make a bed. We've, this has been the main idea. Or day lounger. Day lounger. But then we got onto the idea of an L-shaped couch. It'd be cute. The only con with this is not being able to stand on this side of the island. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we, you can kneel on this side of the island if there's a couch there. Mm -hmm. And we could have it so it's just one couch and then this front part pulls out. But something we're thinking about also is we don't have a whole ton of storage here. So what if there was storage underneath this area and in this little area here that we could just pull the bottom up on the couch for that? Yeah. So we might just leave this as like a permanently attached problem though is that it's over the diesel access so this goes to the top of the diesel tank for like the sending unit and where the fill filler neck gets connected so what we're thinking is like okay well what if we build this area of the couch and then have a standalone box here that's bolted to the frame of that couch and to the floor here and if we ever need to access that dirty old diesel access there all we do is unbolt it from there and then this piece can move yeah that's a good alternative and then we'll be able to use this entire have like one pull up here be able to use this entire area for storage like extra cans and stuff like that or uh, mason jars for doing canning and then also underneath this area possible i like it yeah so we're gonna start framing this out and uh and see where see where the wood takes us because things change. Sure. I don't even need it. It's hot. Yeah, I don't want it. This is what we have to do to get two by fours right now. Because lumber, if you haven't noticed, is ridiculous in price. Just keeps going up, up, up. Every single time we go to the store, which I don't think is the store's fault. Just saying. These used to be part of pallets. Great pieces of lumber. Some of these, not this one specifically, this is probably pine, but some of the pieces of wood that we are using are really nice solid hardwood, which will make an awesome base for our couch. <laughs> pallet wood. Pallet wood actually cleans up really nice. You'd be surprised. We did our whole ceiling in pallet wood. Check out that video right here. Um, yeah, and it turned out gorgeous and it's really good wood. Um, so it's kind of nice to breathe a new life into it. Definitely wear eye pro for this. Sounds like these we need to get scrappy, huh Garcia? Yep, yep. So when she's pulling off, apart the nails. I'm uh, splitting them into two pieces and making the pieces that we need for the frame because we're going to be using them as two by twos when in reality they're one and a half by one and a half. Because why would you call it a two by two and it not actually be two inches by two inches? <laughs> I'm not going to argue about that right now because that's another debate for another time. But here's what I'm doing. <laughs> so I've got the table saw set up to one and a half by one and a half. 
I grab one of our beautiful, as you can see, this is not bird shit all over this board. We actually use this for painting the ceiling material. So this was in between the horses and we lined up all the pieces. It might have a little bit of bird shit. I don't know if this one has nails in it, so. Cool. Are you gonna run that through the table saw? I'm gonna run it through the table saw. Luckily for us, we're using a, uh, a demolition blade on this table saw, which can handle the nails. So it's got carbide tips on it. And uh, this is actually the only blade that we've used this entire build on this table saw. It's the first blade that we put on brand new and we're still using it. It's awesome, y'all. We use the table saw all the time. All the time. Here's a nice little trick that I found. If you slide the thing in and then you put your forearm on the bar and you just use your arm to push it down. I was having a lot of problems with my wrists when we were doing this and when we were doing the ceiling, we were doing so many pallets a day, each of us, that we both really messed up our wrists and hands and stuff. So, the more leverage you can get, the better. And if you can use your arm, like I'm, I could probably just do this with, mm, without my hand, but I don't want it to bounce up and hit me in the face. But I'm really just using this part of my arm. Cute face. You should wear eye pro, because sometimes they bounce up. Simple. This is real time. Real time, real time. Not even sped up, folks. Look how fast I am. Time. And so, it begins. And some framing down, kids. Solid. Yeah, couch is coming together. Together. Well, Brian's working on that. I have the turpentine job. Turpentine on the floor again. Clean it up. For those of you who haven't seen in other videos, we have a little bit of an oil oversaturation problem on the floor, which is a huge bummer. Um, but we're just tackling it each section at a time instead of doing the whole darn thing. Cause like the main walking space, we're walking on this all the time with work boots. So we don't really care about that part right now. But um, if this couch is gonna have storage in it, we're gonna want the floor nice and clean and we may as well do it right now. So that's what I'm doing. All right, so for this, I'm just uh, using some Craig screws, got some wood glue between these pieces, and it is a little bit higher than the wheel well here, because ideally I'd like the slides to exist on there. And Damn. that's how high the, well, the couch cushion will be on top of that platform, and then it'll be able to slide in and out. And so I marked uh, where the furring strip is, here in the wall on the back side of here because when I screw this down into this strip here, then um, I'm also gonna screw this to the back of the wall, to the furring strip on the wall. Sound like a pretty good idea? Look how nice 
else that's coming up? This is gonna be a couch before you know. These nuts here and bolts previously attached to the subfloor. So when you pulled up the little hatch, uh, this plate would also come up and there was no sealant around this. And you could see all sorts of dirt and grime, like you could see all the dirt and grime because that's exposed to the elements out there. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put some automotive grade silicone around here oh, yeah. to seal it off. Seal it up. Do we need the nuts still then? Uh, there's holes that they're plugging up, so oh, got it. I just figured I would just put something solid in. Sure. Just leave them in. That's why I tighten them. Got it. Okay, so after the caulking, all I did was set this plate directly on there and push it down. These screws aren't screwed into anything. Um, they're within the hole. They're inside, yeah. Yeah. So. Inside. Got some R5 going down. Dirty old R5. And ba -ba, floor. Pretty solid. Nice. Sweet. That'll work. So now I'm gonna buff off the excess oil on these old pieces. See the difference between the coloring? Even the way they feel. How do they how that almost oh, feels like yeah. an oil like a crayon? Rubbery. Look at, look at this shit. Yeah. Just peel right it's off. It's like a crayon. It's like a crayon. Yeah. And then this, you can't really peel it up anymore. So that's what we're going for is it's coated, but it's not oversaturated. Yeah, the 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 wood is impregnated with the yeah. with the floor oil. Yeah. And this is just excess. We excess. Alright, scrubberoony time. So this is the stuff I've done, stuff I haven't done. See how the oil picks up all the dirt on the floor? We've been walking on this and it's not leaving the same kind of boot prints or anything. And this super saturated one, let's see what happens. Still have a lot of work to go. You can still feel it. Your nail free here, so you can still see how much is on there. We don't want that. Well, that kicked my butt. I think I got it as good as I can get it. This part is mega oversaturated, and we haven't been walking on this piece of flooring because this is the floor that we cut out of the bathroom. Um, so it's just been hanging out in the barn, full saturation, hasn't had walking, wear and tear, or any of the other treatments that we've used to try to pull the excess oil off of the floor. So, I mean, most of this chunk of wood is gonna be under the couch, and if it really bugs me in the future, I'll have at it again, but this drill technique is really a lot of wear and tear on the old wrist. I think once the turpentine dries, this will probably look more like this. I don't know though, so we'll see what happens. Let's go see what Brian's up to. This is the test piece. So I'm so trying to. Yeah. So 
I think it needs to be three quarter inches away from the wall also because that's too deep because this is going to be essentially like that so I was just doing it like this mm -hmm. so it needs to come forward by so it's basically just the depth of the wood yeah so I need to come forward a little bit is this the first rip? yep I'm doing the first shallow rip here uh, just because it's the router under here is not a very strong one and I don't want to bog it down I've broken bits before, and I've also bent the shafts of bits because I tried to ask too much of it. So this time, I'm not asking a lot of it, and I'm going easy. So uh, we'll get get to work now. How deep do you, are you going for with that groove? Um, so here's the test piece. Um, I, I was doing tests on, oh, let me try to set it on edge and, and get it, but I would have to adjust it too much. So this laying it flat, I've got more control over it. It's more stable, and then um, hang on to. and then this piece will end up being vertical, and then uh, the slats will nestle in there, and then we'll be able to glue and staple them in place. So it'll be like that, nice and flush. Sure. So uh, it's going to be a few, a little bit of time to do each one, but uh, I think that the result's going to be real desirable. Like it's gonna, it's gonna make it fit together real nice. Yeah. We're gonna have a place to set our butts. Down. Yeah. We're gonna sit. Yeah. We're gonna sit so hard. We're just gonna fucking sit. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like this part here and the one at the other end, you're not routing the groove in. The groove only goes to here. Yeah. And then this is the attachment points. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Cool. Nice yeah. thinking. And then these will go. All the slats will bed into yeah. bed that Bed down groove. into there, all the way across. So as deep as Brian just went here, he had uh, the router set to the depth he wanted, but his first pass he didn't he didn't take it to the guard. What he did was he just like slid it across the edge without using the table guard. And then on his last two cuts you saw, he went the whole depth. So now his goal will be to keep shaving it down until he gets to the depth. Yeah. Am I correct? You got it correctly. Correct. Yeah. I was thinking about doing this with a table saw and with a circular saw also, but neither of them, I think this is probably the best way for us with what we have without setting up some crazy jig for depth setting and stuff. Yeah, we already have the router yeah. and the router's good. You just have to treat it with love and care and yeah. be and sweet like, to it. I just unplugged it because this, uh, whenever I just went into it here, um the i saw the router bit start to advance higher so we're now at like a 16th less than what I, where i want to be oh no yeah like it got nudged or something or it came loose yeah it came loose is what happened so now i've got to drop it and um and get it reset, reset because the, the nut is yeah the height because the nut is uh not very tight on this thing. It, I can't seem to like really get it tight because of how it's set up. Oh, let me help you with that. Thank you. We have no idea how old this router is because we got it from my uh, grandfather. Thanks, Bob. He's got, he's, we've got a lot of great things from him. Um, so yeah, this is just one of the older tools that we got. So you would just have to treat them with care and they've been treating us really good. So we're almost done. We're on the home stretch, kids. Yeah. Uh... There we go, the pieces are ready. Pieces are coming together. Cool. All right, so we've got the bottom and the backrest. So we've got these pieces here that we need to decide which way they're gonna go. I think it's this ugly. one's. What? Face that the other way. That way. You like that one that way? All right. Snap. And then this one. That's kind of pretty. Yeah, have that part face out. 
So this is going to go like that. And then that one will probably go like that. Probably like that over there. So. We're going to get back to you. Gluing up the nubs, friends. Body distribution. Nice. Don't be chintzy, right? Yeah, I never be chintzy with the sealants no, or glues. No, no, no. Working with old pallet wood isn't always easy. The boards are often warped and mutilated in spots and there's gouges out of them and obviously nails everywhere. Um, so sometimes they can be a bit difficult. Penis in the anus. Bit of a penis in the anus. Something that we do like about them, not just that they're free because free is never free. Your time is not free. Your time is never free. Um, but something we do like about them is the character of them. And we also really like that we're taking something old and making it into something new when it could have just ended up in the dump. So there's that. At least there's that. Looks good, eh? Good job. What are you doing next? I'm just getting that bird shit off. <laughs> all right, the rest I'll sand later. I just wanted that turd out of there. All right, um, do you want to sand all of these before we attach them? Yes. Okay. If that's okay. Then that happens next. Okay. Sanding time. Yes. Her favorite pastime. All right, now that they're all sanded, it's time to glue. Yeah. Staple. There we go. I guess we need to be measuring them too, eh? Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, you put it on there. Okay. I'll stuff it in. Good. Close enough for our bus. All right, for our bus. <laughs> you want to drive it? We drive it. We drive it. Let's go drive it. All right. We got the second piece in the books. Pow! Backrest. The next part of this project hinges. On the hinge. On the hinge. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna use a dangle continuous hinge. Some people call this piano hinge. This ain't going on piano, so we're gonna call it continuous hinge. Ah, oh, fuck! I forgot my glove, bro. <laughs> Shit! Didn't work. <laughs> That's your superpower, I guess. 
That's how you stop the pin from sliding out, kiddos. It gives it a little squish on the tip. See, look at it. There's Look at it. Before squishes before and kisses. Before squishes and kisses. And then I'm using just a center punch. Mine are mess. We're just disgusting. Yeah, this is what happens when you're trying to get out of a barn that you're getting kicked out of. There you go. We're lucky we've had the barn for this long, but our time has come. It is over. It's over, and we need to get out of here by the end of August. By the time you see this, it'll probably be more like October, October or November or something. <laughs> so, anyways, we're gonna have tans in November. Yeah. Yeah, we are. All right, yeah, we go Hingeruni. 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 Now we're gonna pre-drill every four inches on the hingerooney. We got folded over so we can double our efforts. Yeah. Did I get the dullest drill bit ever? Probably. I wanna tell you guys about this. So what we did was we set the hinge up on the slip here and then we made sure that all of our dots lined up in the middle of the slots. Then we said yes, yes, yes. 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 It was a little more lined up when we did it. Anyways, you get the point. We want to make sure that the holes are lined up with the slats because the screws are going to go into the wood this way and all of our screws, the screws are going to go into the wood this way and all of our screws will poke through just a little bit. So we want to make sure that you don't see those screws here. Don't want no snag of We want to make sure the screws go yeah. into the slats, which will be extra reinforcement. Right, Bamboo? Yeah, that's right, girl, girl. All right, I got a different bit now. New bit? And this is going to be in this orientation. So now we'll open the hinge. The hinge will go right there. Oh, happy? Oh my gosh. All right, this is barrel there. right in the middle? Yep. Yeah. said I'm earning my stripes today. I've earned my stripes so he let me do some shit. Lucky me. Moment of truth. You ready? Kind of. Ready? Woo! <laughs> let go all the way down. We can have it sit. Uh -oh. Are those dirty old trumpet heads gonna get in the way? I don't know. Probably. Oh no, that one broke through. There it goes. It I might. put a human body on there too. There's not that dirty old hinge. Yeah. Put it up, put it up, put it up, put it up. The mounting of the slides. Mounting. What sucks is they didn't. I looked online for the like dimensions and stuff. That shows like uh, uh, like where the holes are, mm -hmm. but they don't have like a schematic of like hole placement or anything. Can so, you see the holes with your eyes? Yeah, but so I could just measure. Oh, <laughs> just use your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to help hold it? Yeah, I'm gonna need you to hold it. Um, I'm gonna mark up on. Uh, what do you think? Something like that? Yeah. Now the marking of the holes. Oh, marking of where 
This guy is gonna go right here. Through both. You know what? I'm gonna see if I can go through this direction. There should be enough room. Hold that for a second. I'm gonna put this nut on. So Brian's got the hinge pushed up to the plywood so that the hinge is level across the top of the wood. All right, I'll do that. I'm just gonna go right through the hole. Yeah, I won't know until, nope, the nut's gotta go on the outside. Didn't come with instructions either. Nope. So hopefully, doing it this way, oh, you know what, now we probably need washers doing it this way. And right there. All right. There's someone who's perfect on this team. Ooh. Finally. Finally. Little Miss Perfect. Little Miss Perfect steps up to the plate once again. <laughs> Alright, now plywood. It sounded. Next part's gonna be difficult. Difficultish. Time to dock this butt neck. So we can get the spacing on it. Does it feel like you're holding all the weight? Yep. Okay. So then we can mark where the notch would be right here. Oh yeah. And we can kind of hollow out. Nice. <laughs> It like, it goes right on the wheel well there. And so we'll put a stop down here for this edge to, to rest on. Oh. Look at that. That little cutie. And then this just uh, comes up Strap and then back. actuate. Why are you jerking it? Oh, I was just pushing my edge instead of pushing the middle. So if I push the middle, then it probably would be smoother. Wow. There we go. Oh my God, that's so cute. Cool. So we're gonna cut out a little piece in the back, just like wallow out a little spot. So then this will lean back a little bit more and not be so upright. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like sitting tall though. Yeah. I think if we just uh, curve out that one little spot. Make it more sloungy. He wants it more sloungy. What do y'all think? Oh, that's good. So we haven't started building the next part. The next part's going to be this little L piece right over here. And then we'll have another uh, couch rooney right there. This is going to be a lounging spot, y'all. Slounging. Hope you're okay with that. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. Love it. This is awesome. You guys might think the next section is a little nuts because, because it counter, is counter. Yep. But we're gonna go for it. You guys are still here. We were just testing out the bed. Almost fell asleep on you. <laughs> <laughs>